Longevity supplements are supposed to make you live longer, but there are some supplements out there that can actually have a negative effect on your longevity and make you age faster. In this video, I'm going to give you the top five popular supplements that actually make you age faster. Do it. Number one is going to be iron. So iron is an essential mineral. You do need iron for many processes inside the body, including hemoglobin production and tissue oxygenation. But in excess, iron has been implicated in atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease. Iron Iron in excess just becomes more susceptible to oxidative stress and inflammation. If you do just to have too much iron in your body, then it's going to get oxidized and that's going to cause more oxidative stress in the body, which causes liver damage, atherosclerosis and heart disease. And when you look at some of the epidemiological studies and clinical studies, then you do find an association between a positive balance of uh, body iron and cardiovascular disease. So you should be very careful with uh, supplementing with iron. Now, I do think that in some cases, supplementing iron can be very beneficial, especially in cases cases of iron deficiency anemia, which is more common among women who have regular menstruation. Men, however, who don't menstruate regularly or they don't bleed either because of cutting themselves or anything like that. So uh, in men, it's very not advised, in my opinion, to use any iron supplements. And it might be that they're actually getting too much iron because men primarily, you know, they eat more red meat as well, usually than, than women do. So they have already higher amounts of iron. So adding an uh, iron supplement is definitely not advisable and will age you faster in excess this but if you actually have iron deficiency anemia and iron deficiency, then uh, yeah, I mean, first of all, you should just increase your dietary iron intake, which includes red meat primarily. If that doesn't improve it, then you also have to look into copper status. So copper actually improves iron absorption and improves hemoglobin production. So without copper, iron doesn't do its job properly. So you need to make sure that you get copper as well. So you get copper from liver and you get the iron from red meat. So that's the, you know, back balance that you need to take into account. Number two is going to be NMN and NAD boosters. Wait a minute. So this is a bit very controversial, of course, because NAD boosters have become one of the most popular anti-aging longevity supplements over the past few years. Now, personally, I do take some NMN and some other NAD boosters pretty regularly, and I do think it has some positive effects on improving health span, improving circadian rhythm alignment, energy production, insulin sensitivity, and many aspects of longevity. However, if you take them in isolation just alone, then they could have actually some negative effects on aging. So the reason has to do with how these NAD precursors can deplete your methyl donors. So methylation is a vital process for survival. Improper methylation patterns can cause cancer, heart disease, and accelerated aging. If you're too low in methyl donors, then your homocysteine levels are going to rise, which is a major cardiovascular disease risk factor. Taking NMN, nicotinamide riboside, or nicotinamide alone without any methyl donors will lead to the depletion of of, uh, some of the key methyl donors like betaine. That's why when you are taking some NMN or something like that, then you should always pair it together with some of the uh, methyl donors like TMG. Next supplement on the list is going to be pre-workout with caffeine. Of course, regular coffee consumption is associated with longevity and reduced risk of mortality, but that generally applies to regular coffee, not powdered caffeine and definitely not pre-workout supplements. So yeah, there are some health benefits to caffeine as well, Although it's not, you know, inherently health promoting, it does have, you know, some mitochondrial effects or it does have like performance boosting effects and uh, it can help with some like, you know, aspects of energy production for sure. But the issue is that the pre-workout supplements usually have just too much caffeine. The amount of caffeine in a dose of pre-workout is usually twice the amount of regular coffee. So just getting too much caffeine and many people just, you know, double dose the pre-workout as well to get a good workout, etc. But they're just ending up getting so much caffeine in their system that it's going to disrupt their sleep. It can co raise too much cortisol. It can like lead to the breakdown of collagen, which accelerates skin aging. So definitely powdered caffeine, even in the form of pre-workout supplements, isn't something that I definitely don't uh, you know, rec recommend. Other pre-workout supplements without caffeine are great, like the citrulline and other compounds in there can help with the workout a lot. But I mean, the caffeine isn't necessarily the healthiest component of that. And there are many like case studies where just people accidentally consume powdered caffeine in too large amounts, thinking that it's creatine or something like that, and they just to die to a heart attack. A double dose in the head. Next supplement on the list is going to be calcium, which is another essential mineral. And uh, yes, dietary calcium intake is very important for preventing osteoporosis and just improving many aspects of overall health. Calcium supplementation, however, 
can also increase the risk of heart disease and cardiovascular disease similar to iron because it just promotes atherosclerosis and tissue calcification. And uh, there are like studies finding that uh, supplementing 700 to 1000 milligrams of uh, supplementary uh, calcium can increase the uh, risk of uh, cardiovascular disease by about 15% in healthy postmenopausal women even. So women, when they go through menopause, then estrogen drops, then they might need some extra calcium and supplementing calcium if they're not eating any calcium calcium from food can actually be a good idea for sure but they have to make sure that their calcium status is actually low if your calcium status is already high and you're eating dairy on top of the calcium supplement that you're taking then that might increase the risk of uh, calcification so similar to iron make sure you get your calcium from food as much as possible and the best sources of uh, calcium from food are dairy and some uh, vegetables and plants if you do need calcium supplementation, then yeah, just make sure that you actually have a deficiency. And it's more likely that women, especially uh, postmenopausal women, might need some calcium. Can I have that Milky Way? The last supplement on the list isn't necessarily a supplement, it's more like a herb or a spice and uh, cinnamon. So cinnamon actually, you know, has a lot of benefits in terms of improving insulin sensitivity and even being a potential pharmaceutical agent for uh, helping to treat type 2 diabetes through the effects on insulin sensitivity. However, all those benefits apply to Ceylon cinnamon, which is the healthy kind. Most of the conventional cinnamon out there that isn't Ceylon cinnamon usually is cassia cinnamon, which uh, actually contains this Coumarin, which uh, can actually be very toxic to your liver and can cause some other health issues. So regular cinnamon that isn't Ceylon cinnamon generally is actually unhealthy for you because it just contains these large amounts of coumarin that can have very bad effects on your liver. Most of the cinnamon supplements and foods out there have the cassia cinnamon, which is the one that has these high amounts of coumarin. Cassia cinnamon contains about 1% coumarin, while Ceylon cinnamon contains only 0.004% which is 250 times less. So I do believe that cinnamon is a great spice. It can be very beneficial for blood sugar regulation and insulin sensitivity, but make sure that it's actually saline cinnamon, not the cassia cinnamon. And if it doesn't say that it's specifically saline cinnamon, then chances are that it's cassia cinnamon because it's probably cheaper and it definitely causes more damage to your liver than the saline cinnamon, which uh, doesn't cause any liver damage. If you do want to slow down aging and live longer, then I am looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock if you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.